everyone, welcome. In the last video, I mentioned I had some bigger plans with my Unread server. And you guessed it already, this is the video. I'm going to switch my Ryzen 2700X to this one. This is a Threadripper, a 2920X. This is a 12 core, 24 threads with a base clock of 3.5 gigahertz and a boost of up to 4.3. It has 60 PCI Express lanes. So that's a lot more than the Ryzen 7 2700X that's currently installed in my Unraid server. So this CPU will be the new heart of our Unraid server. And that will be installed on this motherboard. This is a TR4 motherboard with a X399 chipset. This has um, support for Quad SLE and Crossfire. It also has three M.2 slots and a U2 slot. Um, we'll probably get to that in another video. Um, I have some plans for that as well. But this will be the motherboard. It has Quad Channel and all the fun stuff, dual Intel Gigabit next. Yeah, the stuff you would expect from a motherboard priced of a little bit over 300 euros here in the Netherlands. So this will be the motherboard we're gonna use in this server. Now, if you saw the other Decembro server video and yeah, where I did the build of this Unread, you, you saw that, that there was not that much room in this server chassis. So uh, yeah, room is a little bit limited and therefore uh, water cooling is not an option. So no AIO liquid cooler. For that, I chose this one. This is from Noctua and this is their, well, the naming, NHU9 TR4 SP3. This is a 92 millimeter height uh, dual fan, uh, so push-pull system. And this is a TR4 socket cooler as well. So hopefully this will keep our 2920X cool under load. That's the idea. In this video, we're gonna build my system. First, we get all the stuff out that is currently installed in there. And yeah, that will be a little bit of a challenge because it's all stuffed really close together and uh, Black Vortex is overlapping the motherboard. So I suspect I have to disassemble half the case to get even to the motherboard. Yeah, so that, that's a bit tricky. Now at the moment of shooting this video, there is currently a 32 gigabytes of DDR4 ECC memory installed. I ordered another 32 gigabytes of DDR4 ECC. Um, the ECC memory that's currently installed is 2133 megahertz and what I have ordered is 2666. So that might be not all compatible. I don't know. Yeah, maybe we'll run into some issues with the setup. I don't know. But the memory as of now has not arrived yet. So hopefully during the shooting of this video the memory will arrive and somewhere in this video we can upgrade the RAM as well. So we have 64 gigabyte of RAM in total. Now I will go down to the pantry, get my Unraid server out of the server rack. We'll get it here, we will disassemble it. I will try to get most of it on camera for you. After that, we're gonna install the CPU onto this motherboard with the cooler as well. And then we're gonna assemble the case again. And hopefully it will power on with only two memory modules. So it will not be quad channel for now. So let's get started, shall we?
have lift off. Nice. So now we'll just do the BIOS settings. And yeah, you can see it. There is the 850. We'll talk about that in a second. Yeah, and three M.2 SSDs, of which two are NVMe drives. Yeah, we'll talk about that as well, and about the hard drive that came out of this. So um, yeah, we'll just do the BIOS settings now, and then I will pick it up upstairs. So everything is running, and as you can see in the background, here it is, the Threadripper 2920X 12-core CPU at 3.5 GHz. 12 cores, 24 threads. Yeah, that's really nice, because I got 4 cores and 8 threads extra, and I assigned those cores and threads to my gaming VM, which is currently paused. Let's resume that one. But uh, that one got four cores and eight threads. So what I came short on my 2700X is actually assigned to my gaming VM now. So I have still eight cores and uh, 16 threads left for virtualization, Docker and all that kind of stuff. So that's really nice. Also, we have plenty of PCI Express lanes. So if I want to install a second GPU, for example, for transcoding Plex, I can do that without um, even breaking a sweat uh, as for the PCI Express lanes. Now, if we scroll down even further, you can see 64 gigabyte DDR4 multi-bit ECC. So uh, that's the second DDR4 kit I got in a couple days after recording the first part of this video. So I have 64 gigabytes of RAM in total now and 16 gigabytes of that is assigned to the gaming VM. Yeah, and that one is running as well. We have one other VM running, all the Dockers are running, and still we have plenty of RAM left. So I'm really happy with that. Um, the RAM, as I mentioned, is 2666, so I downclocked that to 2133. So they all run at the same speeds. And we have quadruple channel, quad channel, memory, yeah. That's working as well. Uh, I played a couple of games already and I must say it runs really nice. So yeah, nothing to complain there. The thing I, yeah, well, let's get to that list I was talking about in the pantry. Um, things didn't go according to plan. Uh, at first it started with the PSU. As you saw, we're really close to each other and there was practically no room between them to move anything. So in the process, I may have slightly broken my black vortex yeah that was not on purpose no um you can see it here um the SATA port 4 was squeezed i don't know almost crushed on the SATA cables and power cables so it almost came off um luckily it was still working so i decided to um, get a glue gun and glue the whole thing together so make it even better and I think I succeeded in that. It's it's not going anywhere now. Um, but with that, I figured that maybe it's a better idea to install a 850 watt I had from my workstation PC and install the 1200 watt in my workstation. Yeah, so I just swapped the PSUs and therefore I had a little bit more room in my server chassis from Shenbro. Um, that was one thing and also along the upgrade process I figured out that I didn't want to use the Hitachi drive any longer for the for the gaming VM where the games were installed. Um, one video back I did the video about the gaming VM, the IC dock, a tough armor, a mobile rack and yeah I figured that I have three M.2 slots now and I have a spare one terabyte Intel NVMe SSD. So yeah, why not put it to some good use? Install it on this motherboard as well, because yeah, we have plenty of PCI Express lanes. So I installed that SSD. I assigned that SSD to the gaming VM as well. And yeah, well, let's have a look at that. Um, gaming VM, this one, uh, we we'll come to that in a bit. Yeah, here you can see four cores, eight threads. And here we have the graphics card, of course. And this is the Intel NVMe SSD. And we have the Samsung NVMe SSD. So both NVMe SSDs are assigned to this VM, um, as well as 16 gigabytes of RAM. So yeah, I'm quite happy with this. Um, at first, the graphics card, by the way, wasn't working because yeah, it was all, now was it all assigned? Yeah, partly. Um, the, the gaming VM itself, let me show you. Um, form view, XML view. If we scroll down, 
yep and we go all the way to the bottom everything between these lines is the graphics card and i already dumped the bios on my previous system so i can just use that bios again um, I tell my virtual machine um, on what slot, on what physical slot my graphics card is and the audio part that comes with the graphics card. And then we assign it to the VM on a virtual slot. And that's what this line is about. And that, that was a little bit messed up because it was on a different slot on the um, X470 motherboard. So I changed this and everything was good again. Yeah, we have five SSDs now and we have four four hard drives yeah five ssds one ssd is the caching drive then we have the four array members parity and three member disks and then we have the other ssds are just for virtual machines and pass through and all that kind of stuff works really well um the other problem i had was the temperature of my um, thread ripper it was showing here um 78 degrees celsius idle so it wasn't even doing anything. So I installed another SSD with a bare installation of Windows 10. Ran Prime 95 for 45 minutes and everything was good. So yeah, I figured that um, maybe setting this to the good sensor, uh, the correct sensor would solve my problem. And indeed it did. I also upgraded the BIOS version. As you can see here, it's the latest version. All my dockers are up and running again. So that's really nice as well. And let me see, do I forget something? Yeah, I didn't even tell you guys why I upgraded my Unraid server, because it was working flawlessly. There was nothing wrong with it. Um, I decided that uh, the gaming PC behind me was becoming obsolete. I wasn't gaming that often anymore. And um, I sold my graphics card to Chevy and I had an i9 and I sold that one as well. So the 2700 that was in my Unraid server before is now on my workstation PC again. Yeah, and I stream all my games now through Moonlight or Steam streaming from every device in the house. Yeah, straight on the Threadripper Unraid setup. So I still need to come up with a good name for this because R7 Unraid isn't suitable anymore. Tronraid. Tronraid, that sounds way cooler than R7 Unraid. Tronraid it will be, yeah. So yeah, with that being said, um, this is basically what I wanted to talk about. So we have some more resources now for our server. We have plenty of RAM, we have plenty of cores, and I think we can hold on to this server a little bit longer now. Yeah, um, there will be other servers, uh, but that will probably be for virtualization. Uh, I still need a UPS a backup power solution, so I'm still looking into that. I just wanted to share with you my upgrade experience to this Threadripper. I think it's really awesome. If you have any comments, suggestions, maybe some advice, please leave them down in the comment section. Thank you all for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.